Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I got another Vegas Pro tutorial for you. And in this one, I'm gonna be teaching you a little bit more intermediate level color grading and color correction skills that I've picked up over the you know years of doing this to make your job easier and to make your videos look way more awesome, cinematic, and professional. If you haven't seen the first part of this video, I have done that already, and I'll link it in the description below and in the card up there. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, so to start this off, I'm gonna show you an example footage of what we're gonna be creating using the footage I recorded. So if you wanna make your footage look like that, this is what we're gonna cover in this tutorial. This tutorial today is brought to you by SEMW. It's an independent company that makes extremely useful plugins that can take your color grading to the next level. If you're even remotely serious on wanting to make your videos look professional, you definitely wanna use this plugin. For a limited time, you can get 20% off using the link in the description below, so get it before the deal ends. In the last video of color correction, I already went over a lot of stuff, but we're going to recap that a little bit. To start it off, you gotta have a good camera that can record in at least 24 frames a second. In America, 24 frames per second is the standard frame rate for cinematic look, and in other countries, typically it's 25 frames a second. And when you're recording in those frame rates, you want to record in a shutter speed that is double that. So if you're recording in 24 frames per second, you want your shutter speed to be at least 48 or 50. If you're recording in 25 frames per second, 50 shutter speed is what you need. That's going to provide you this cinematic motion blur. Next thing is you want to use a lens that has a good depth of field. And what that means is that your subject has a nice blurry background behind them. This is a real key thing they use in footage to make things look cinematic. And that's something that I would recommend doing. Next is lighting. Lighting is a key factor in making things look cinematic. If you're outdoors, it's a little harder to control the lighting, but typically you want some sort of key light, which is a big bright light coming at you, some sort of fill light to provide a little bit of light coming at the dark or shadow spots, just to provide you a good dynamic contrast. Next, we talk about white balance correction. You can do this by bringing a white balance card, like the one I'm using right here. They're inexpensive and they really help you get the correct colors. I'll link the one I have in the description below. Next, you want to adjust your lift gamma and gain, which will bring your luminance levels and your brightness levels of your entire video into the legal limits and at the borders of the legal limits. In the last video, I color corrected using Color Corrector Plugin and Color Corrector Secondary. I added a vignette, I added cinematic bars, and I added a film grain. Things I didn't go over but will do it in this video is correcting multiple shots at once, knowing the vector scope and utilizing it to get the most accurate skin tones going on a skin tone line, getting the correct skin tone hue and utilizing the vector scope to help that out. I'm gonna color grade using the wheels down here instead of color corrector and desaturating the shadows or crushing the blacks. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna drag a batch of footage into here. Say yes to match the video project settings. This is some 4K footage I took with my Panasonic GH5S. If you wanna practice color grading on some really high quality footage, I provide that to my Scrapyard supporters and you can learn about that in the description below. So I have my five shots right up here. They're all outdoors and shot in the very similar lighting. So if I wanna grade all these at the same time, instead of right clicking and grading every single one of these individually, I can put these into a nest. So I'm gonna hit Control S, save my current project. I'm just gonna call it test. And to show you an example, I'm gonna select my first clip, hold shift, select my last clip, right click, go up to create nested timeline or hit Alt C. And then it's gonna say, what do you wanna name this timeline? I'm just gonna call it test untitled timeline. And this creates a brand new timeline for clips you selected. And that's what's called a nest. It's nested inside your parent timeline and you can seamlessly go back and forth between them using this button right here. If you click this button, it goes to your parent timeline or hit Alt P. And in my main first timeline I created, those five clips are now merged into one. So now we can grade all of them at the same time. Next, I wanna make sure I have the correct white balance. And you see I brought my white card out here and put it in the scene. If I open my pan and crop tool and I just zoom into it right here, I'm gonna go right in the dead center of this. And we can already see it looks a little bluish, but we're gonna figure that out right now. If I hold Alt and press G, that opens my color grading window. So to correct my white balance, I'm gonna go up to my vector scope and look and make sure I want this little white point, which is my entire white area, to be in the dead center. If you don't see your vector scope, you can easily get that by going to View, Window, and choosing Vector Scopes. And then in the drop down up here, you can choose Vector Scope Waveform. This is the two main ones that I use all the time. So to correct this, this dot is a little bit too far into the blue range. 
So I'm going to select this color curve down here. You can click auto adjust, but that doesn't typically work some of the times. So I like to do it manually. So I'm going to check blue and then I'm going to bring down the blue a bit. And that's going to move it over to the left to the green area. And then I'm going to click green now and then drag that down. And that's going to move it up to the center, close to the center. We're really close. So I'm going to bring the green down just a little bit more. And then I'm going to raise the blues, give it a little bit more blue. And there we go. We are really close to center and I'm okay with that. Now our white is neutral white. If we go to our pan and crop, right click restore. Now our white balance is corrected. Next, we're going to adjust the lift, gamma and the gain, which is essentially the lows, mids and highs. We're going to adjust the luminance level of these using the sliders down here. So typically I start with lift and I drop that down to where I'm barely touching and hugging the zero line. And then after that, I go to my gain and then raise that to where the brightest thing I want is barely touching the 100. You'll see some stuff go past the 100 and that's the illegal limits. And that means everything past that is blown out white. So you won't see any details in this sky over here, but I'm okay with that. You'll see that raised everything in this part. And so now I'm gonna drop my gamma, which provides my dynamic contrast down to the zero range. I'm gonna bump zero again. That looks pretty good to me right about there. Now you'll see the saturation is just a little bit low. So let's go ahead and go to the input output. And then we're gonna bump up saturation a little bit. We can see if we raise it way high, that'll look terrible. So I'm gonna put that about 20%. 20% saturation looks good to me. Next, hit Control S to save because you always wanna save. And now I'm ready to color correct. So to start off my color correction, I wanna make sure I have the proper skin tones. So I went over to a shot here down in the timeline of my face so we can make sure the skin tones are correct. So this is the part I didn't go over last time, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this pan and crop tool and zoom in right to my forehead so we can see what color my skin tones are. And once I do that, we'll see the vector scope and my skin tones are hovering right over the 127 degree mark. That's pretty much the center of that. But the proper skin tone degree we wanna be at is at 117. 117 is the average skin tone so right now basically I'm saying my skin is too greenish yellow so I'm gonna adjust that I'm gonna go into my pan crop I'm gonna select my sync cursor and then I'm going to add a keyframe right here and I'm also gonna split this clip right here so I can easily go back and forth so now if I want to see the differences I'm making I can just go back and forth one keyframe so one way you could adjust your skin tones is using the color corrector secondary. We want to make sure we get this done first because you don't want to start doing all sorts of color corrections with the wrong skin tone color because that may turn out to be bad. So I'm going to drag and drop the secondary onto this timeline and adjust my skin tone as a whole. I'm going to select the effect range right in the dead center there. If I do show mask and then open up these luminance drop downs, then I'm going to adjust these around. I'm going to skip forward and show you what it looks like to get the entire skin tone range. And then once it looks something like this, if you uncheck show mask, you can scroll up and rotate your hue. And that'll confirm if you got all your skin tone. So now that we got that, I'm going to go back to here, zoomed in. And we're going to look over here at the vector scope. Right here, we're at about 126, 127. I want to be right here at 117. So I'm going to rotate my hue to the red section to where it goes up. And there we go. My skin tone is right in the dead center, or really close to 117. If I go back or keyframe and see, now my skin tone looks normal. Next thing is I want to talk about the saturation of the skin tone. Typically, you don't want your skin tone to be above 40. 40 is the limit. Anything above that, it'll start getting really saturated and look kind of weird. You may want to do it as an artistic choice, but if you're looking for that professional look or whatnot, you can bring it down to the 40 area. So I'm going to drag and drop my saturation down, and you can do that in the color corrector secondary. You can drag the saturation down specifically of your skin tone. And I'm going to bring mine down right there to where it's touching 40. Let me see what that looks like. That's looking a lot better. Next, I'm going to color grade using the wheels. So we have the lift, which controls the lows. Gamma controls the mids. Gain controls the highs. And offset controls the overall look of the entire clip. So I'm going to go with that standard old orange and teal look to give it the most cinematic look here. So when you're correcting with the wheels, if you click and drag, you're going to see that they go really far, really fast. But if you want to really pinpoint it down, if you hold control and then move it, it goes at a very small rate, which is fantastic. It makes it way better to color crack that way. So I'm dragging, I'm pushing a lot of blues into here. And then next I wanna push more blues with my lifts, giving it that gloomy feel. Next I'm gonna bring my gamma, the opposite end, and go to the orange, bring some life back into my face a little bit. And then next I wanna bring my gain. I'm gonna bring that up a little bit. So put some orange into the highs. And there we go, it looks pretty good. So if I take off all the effects I've done, that's what we started with, and that's what we have now which looks really awesome. So the last thing I wanna tell you about that I did not go over in my other tutorial, and that's desaturating the shadows. So you'll see when I pushed in these blues in the offset and I pushed in the lift, I pushed in the blues here, it added blues to the shadows. 
So right here, you can see in between my back door window, right here is supposed to be completely black because there's no way my camera could have picked up what was inside of there. So this is supposed to be extremely black. Same with around my pupils, which I'll zoom in and show you. So you'll see around my pupils, this is supposed to be black. The pupil itself is supposed to be solid black. And then around my eye right here is supposed to be black too. But you'll see a lot of blue hue in here. And the thing professionals do in making their videos look amazing and making LUTs look great, and that's desaturating the shadows. So Vegas does not have a built-in way to do this, even though it's extremely essential. I wish they did get that, but they don't. So instead you have to use a plugin and the plugin I love is called Grade Color Curves. Now in here, this is a paid program, but if you wanna try it out, you can try it out for free in the description below. So I'm gonna drag and drop Grade Color Curves onto the timeline itself and adjust it as a whole. And you'll see when I open it, it has a bunch of curves you can mess with for the RGB and the brightness. And then you can go into the hue saturation menus, which has a bunch of hue and saturation curve lines that you can mess with that can really, really make color grading easier. So I'm gonna go all the way and leave just saturation depending on brightness here. Now basically this line right here is absolute blacks to absolute whites, and it being in the dead center means it's 100% saturated. Now when I wanna desaturate the shadows, I'm gonna put a point right about here and I'm gonna put another point right about here by double clicking. I'm gonna right click on this one and do curve shape linear so it's straight. And then if I right click on this one, I'm gonna go curve shape manual. Same with this one, right click, curve shape manual. So I'm gonna drag this one down and you'll see it's just totally turning everything black. Once it gets to a certain hue, they're getting black, but that's a little too much right here. It doesn't look so good. I'm losing a lot of the dark blues. And so what I wanna do is pull this curve line up here and then I want to bring this one and pull it so where it's only getting just the darkness that needs to be desaturated. Keep pulling this up and we'll see some of the blues coming back. And if we undo this plugin, you'll see the difference. If we do it, you'll see all the blacks right here where we see the blue tint. If we select it, it is darkened out black. Same with the pupil. If we look into that, the pupil has that blue hue, but if we enable the plugin, we have now crushed it completely. But if we zoom out, right click restore, now you'll see the window here is blacked out if we undo it. There we go. We are desaturating the blacks. It's a little effect, one that can easily be skipped, of course, if Vegas doesn't have this plugin, but it provides a huge impact on making your film and video look cinematic. So again, if you wanna try out color grade curves, you can for free completely. And if you love it like I do and you wanna purchase it, you can get it for 20% off using the link in the description below. And then lastly, I'm gonna exit this color grading menu. If we wanna add cinematic bars, you can easily drag and drop a PNG of cinematic bars over this, or you can open your pan crop tool, enable snapping, disable lock aspect ratio, drag this down twice, and then bam, you got cinematic bars. And then if you go down to your effects, you go to your vignette, you can adjust the default vignette to make it look good. I'm gonna do my Scrapyard Films one, and that adds the darkened sides, really emphasizes this, makes it look great. And last thing, of course, you can add is a film grain overlay. If you drag and drop that above your timeline, and then go to your video timeline track options, go down to compositing mode, and do screen. That'll screen this over here, and then you drag your opacity down to about 15% looks pretty good. If you don't want this overlay to affect your cinematic bars, get a PNG of your cinematic bars and put them above this film grain and you'll be good to go. And there you have it. You have now learned all of the tools that I use on a daily basis on to make my color corrections look awesome and professional and make those LUTs look really good. I hope you learned something and if you did, be sure to shoot and like and subscribe down there because that'll really help me out. And once I hit 10,000 subscribers, I'm gonna be giving away a free LUT pack for everybody who watches my stuff. And if you wanna learn about supporting the channel, you can do that in the description below as well. You can support me for as little as a dollar a month. And if you do, you get access to a VIP lounge and a bunch of extra downloads that I've created and assets and a bunch of awesome stuff. So thanks again for watching everybody and I'll see y'all in the next video. And I wanna give a shout out to all my supporters, especially my super scrappers, LMC, HPL Gamers, and Old Man Beta.